In this video, I'd like to talk about whether you should be using videos or books when it comes to training your team. I love books. As you can see, this is my bookshelves, and it's only a portion of the books I have in my home. There's bookshelves in many rooms. So I've always loved books. I, I read voraciously. Books are amazing to me, and, and I tr truly do love them and enjoy them. And I do use my books for learning. So when it for years, when it was time for me to learn about a topic, I would find books in the topic. And here's just a few of the different books I've I've you know read on things like time uh, management, on networking, on consulting, on many different things. So this is just a few of the books that I've used to learn. But lately I've been taking more courses online and these online courses use video training to teach over the computer. So I was starting to wonder which is better. Should I be focusing on books for learning? Should I be focusing on videos for learning? And for teaching myself, should I be writing books or should I be creating videos? So books do have a few benefits when it comes to learning. First off, until recently, most books had to be published by large publishing companies. So it meant that there was a sort of a ch challenge levels you had to go through in order to get your book published. So there were gatekeepers that, that would keep out some of the poor quality books. So gatekeepers may result in, in better quality for books, keeping in mind that famous authors like Ernest Hemingway were originally turned down by publishers and, and started out as self -pub being self-published. Another benefit of books is you can sometimes access the information faster than having to go through a whole video. So if there's a chapter on a certain part topic that you want, you can flip to that first or you can use the index to go to it instead of watching the whole video trying to figure out where the one little bit is you need. And a book, you know, you're not tied to a computer or an electronic device, you don't need power, so it it's portable, you can take anywhere. And if you don't mind marking up your books, it's easier to bookmark. You can highlight things and put a bookmark in and things. Personally, I don't like to, to mark up my books, but for some people, if it's a textbook or something you're using only to learn, then it can make sense to, to highlight the areas you want to be able to come back to. I consider ebooks to be books as well. I, I don't get involved in the whole ebooks versus books uh, you know, issues. I love both of them. I love with ebooks that I can store thousands of them on my phone or ebook reader. I like that I can take digital notes and organize them and search for them. And ebooks have smaller storage than video because you can fit over a thousand ebooks in a gigabyte of storage, but that might only give you about 23 minutes of HD video. So what are some benefits of video training? Well, video training can be a lot stronger than say photos and books or illustrations uh, for something like a physical skill, something where you need to actually see how to do it. A good example is I had someone gift me uh, a sockeye salmon and I had no idea how to clean the salmon. It was head on, everything hadn't been cleaned at all. So I needed to clean it. So I found a video online on YouTube on how to clean a sockeye salmon and I took that out in my tablet, set it in my picnic table and that's what I used to clean the fish. So that worked very well and, and I think it was a lot easier than trying to go through a book because books are sometimes is limited into how many pictures they can actually even show. Video engages more senses. There's audio and you know visual and motion as well and you can have even text. So you've got the the mo moving pictures, the audio and and the you know text as well rather than just text and pictures. So video would be good for auditory learners or kinesthetic learners. The personality of the creator can come through a lot more in video because you hear their voice, you see them if they're on the screen, you can see their passion, and, and assuming you like the, the brand, or like the creator, like their personality, then this is a positive. It feels more conversational too. Video, even though you're not talking back to the video most times, although many of us do talk back to videos when we disagree with them, uh, but it feels more conversational because the person's talking to you. And of course, video can also be viewed on mobile as well. 
some book drawbacks or ebook drawbacks. Uh, so they usually are limited to how many illustrations or pictures you can get in a book or an ebook because, and this stems back to it was expensive to print books so therefore you couldn't have that many pictures and it was even more expensive to print color pictures so therefore most books were limited to the bare minimum number of illustrations needed to show you something so this limitation of actual pictures and you know can make it difficult if you're trying to show a physical skill a how to something like a tai chi or an exercise or an actual do it yourself working with tools and things like that Video has some of its own drawbacks. A uh, person's voice or manner of speaking can be distracting, like if they speak in a very monotone voice. A uh, thick accent can be a problem too. I had one fellow who had a lovely Irish accent, but I had difficulty actually figuring out what he was saying in the video. Even when I put my headphones on, it still wasn't much better. Or someone saying, um, a lot. This is something I notice as a professional speaker. Someone saying, um, 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 it, it kind of drives me crazy. And I might do it occasionally myself, but I don't notice as much there. Other drawback with video is it's sometimes hard to find or jump right to the area you need. If it's a two hour training video and what you need is at 41 minutes and 30 seconds, you've just watched 41 you know, minutes before you get to the part you need to see. And video does have some large storage requirements. Now, storage is getting cheaper and cheaper. Many new computers are coming with a terabyte of drive now, and you can buy you know, larger, uh, multiple terabyte drives. And a lot of people use cloud storage, but that can still be an issue for some in some cases. Mobile devices don't have a lot of storage, so often they rely on cloud storage, uh, video storage online, and that can be a problem where the internet is spotty. So you know you might want to say, okay, I'm going to watch that learning video now when I've got some downtime. But if you can't get a good internet connection, uh, that can be that can be difficult, and to do it on data can be very expensive as well. There is free video storage out there, such as YouTube. The drawback is a lot of the free storage is advertising based or limited. So there can be an issue there if you're wanting to train other people, you may not want to subject them to advertising. And handheld devices, working with them a lot, can have been associated with vision and some other health problems. So there's some drawbacks there. So which is the best for learning video or books or eBooks? Well, I don't think there's a clear winner. I think it depends on your learning style. I would suggest in, in your individual case, you test both ways for learning and see which helps you retain better. So do you learn better if you've watched a short video on the topic or if you've read a chapter? Try both and see which you seem to connect with. Now, in my own case, I, I had a bit of an experiment here because I've been running a coaching program for some time, and this coaching program started as a shared notebook online. Think of it like an ebook. And my clients all had access to the shared notebook, but whenever I would talk to them during a coaching session, almost none of them ever read the sections that I had asked them to read that week. So I moved to short videos instead, and I'm finding more of my clients are watching the videos than read the notebook. So this is my own personal experience. So in the case of my clients, my clients seem to prefer me to teach them by video. So that's what I've moved to. Your mileage may vary. So again, you want to figure out which is best. Perhaps offer your clients both options. Offer one, you know, one at one price and maybe a package with both at another price and see how it goes. You can see examples of my video training at uh, my online time management school at courses.captaintime.com. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please click on like or share it with others.